when you know that the fine tuning of the universe is used by some to indicate um, a uh, a creator or some some intelligent uh, structure to our universe. Tell me why that's not true. Let me start by explaining what fine tuning is. What do we mean when we say the universe is very fine tuned? The forces, there's, there are four forces of nature, the two nuclear forces, the strong and the weak force, uh, gravity and electromagnetism. And of course, there is a whole zoo of elementary particles that have certain properties, mass and charge. And when we put this all together and we predict the evolution of the universe from the, the Big Bang to today, we find that we have a universe that is very conducive to, our, to life, to humans and to other life. What do we need for that? Well, one thing we need is we need the heavy elements that are in our bodies. We need carbon, we're made, made of a lot of carbon and oxygen that, that is part of water. And these came from uh, supernova. These, came, these were made inside stars and then dispersed into space in the supernova. So when they need, blew up. That blew up and threw them out into space. The early stars were, were made of just hydrogen and helium and a little bit of lithium, and that isn't anything you can make life out of. So what we needed was for the universe to evolve in a way, first of all, that stars formed, that, that those stars would die, then would, um, would, would, um, would form the heavier elements in their supernova explosion and disperse them throughout uh, the, the neighborhood, and that they would re later recondense into other stars and have planets around them, and all sorts of things like this are necessary. And, and there, it turns out that that's a very finely tuned process. For instance, even just, let's say, making carbon inside a star, okay, that's something that's done by something called the triple alpha process, where um, three helium uh, nuclei have to collide. So the first they collide, and they form beryllium, then another one hits, it, it, it forms carbon, but it's a very delicate and unlikely process, except that the nuclear structure of the carbon atom has a certain quirk to it that makes this much more likely. Mm. That quirk it has to do with the property of the strong nuclear force, and if you change the strength of that force by half a percent, you ruin that. And it turns out that everywhere we look, when we, when we, when we um, analyze the evolution of the universe, when we do computer models, what would happen if this was changed and that was changed, we find such coincidences. The electromagnetic force couldn't change outside of a few percent without the strong life as we know it. The weak force uh, couldn't change very much. The mass of the electron couldn't change that much. And there's a lot of little accidents, seemingly accidents, that, that had to happen to allow this picture that I told you about of of forming uh, stars, forming the heavy elements, blowing them out in supernova, uh, that, that allow us to be here. So that's the fine-tuning issue. And a, a lot of people think that that's evidence that the universe was very well designed. Uh, because why should those forces be that way? And, and physics has no explanation uh, as of yet for why the strength of those forces should be that. There's no principle that we can say, well, if there's this general principle and it has to be that way. Einstein wanted to find yeah, something like right, that and we're right. still looking for something, but we don't, haven't found anything. So uh, theologians, for instance, take that as, uh, like to take that as an example of uh, why the, or an argument for why the universe is designed. But what's happened in, in the last 10, 20 years is that as physicists, cosmologists have been uh, investigating the, the um, origin of our universe, uh, we seem to have come upon this necessity for there to be other universes. So most of the modern theories of cosmology involve some kind of um, idea that there are many universes. It's not an idea that people have invented to explain the fine-tuning. In fact, no one in the past, uh, a few people did, but not a lot of people thought much about the fine-tuning until uh, pretty recently. So why do you think it just suddenly happened that uh, 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 physicists are talking about uh, multiple universes? Well, it, it, it came, the, multi, that, the idea of multiple universes came up in, in different theories that, of cosmology that have been developed, but physicists haven't gone to say, gee, how can we explain fine-tuning? We have to justify this multiverse. It uh, went the other way. Physicists uh, have come upon the idea of the multiverse by developing their theories. And they say, oh, this theory seems to predict uh, other universes. And, and then I think the uh, philosophers have been putting uh, that question together with the multiverse issue. So basically you have two strands of, of, of conversation that have been going on rather independently, the development of a multiverse through uh, various theories that have been occurring, inflation and different kinds of chaotic inflation, et cetera. Uh, and then the other 
side, the, uh, the analysis of, of the different forces of, of nature have led to the fine-tuning issues. So these two strands have been developed independently over a, a number of yeah, decades, and, the, the, and then suddenly they seem to interrelate to each other. Yeah, the, the fine-tuning issue, uh, although it had been raised as early, I think, as the 50s, uh, I, uh, um, it hasn't really been much of an issue in physics. When I studied physics and uh, it was in graduate school, no one was talking about fine-tuning as being something to explain. Uh, the, the issues that, that uh, physicists are always focused on are, are the fundamental issues of the, of the theories, of the forces and the evolution of the universe, and that's always through the years. So what do you feel about fine-tuning now? I mean, well, it, it wasn't something you were concerned about in graduate school. Well, yeah, yeah but, well, it, it, as you get into philosophical issues, then, then people discuss fine-tuning from the point of view of uh, philosophy or is theology. Is it a legitimate it, it's a, conversation? Well, of course it's a legitimate conversation, and, okay. and I, I don't know why it's become more popular in the last decade or so to discuss fine-tuning, mm -hmm. but maybe it's because there's an answer to it, uh, which is the multiverse, because the different universes can have different laws. So the way the multiverse answers the fine-tuning is that there are many universes with different laws, and some will have life and some won't. And of course, if you're, since you're alive and you find yourself, you're gonna find yourself in one with those parameters that, that allow life to, to form. Mm -hmm. Is that the only answer to fine tuning? Suppose I told you that there were no such thing as a, a multiverse and that was proven, hypothetically. Where would you be in terms of the I, I would say, wow, I wonder why uh, maybe God did it. I don't know. I, no, I, I, what, I, what else would be? I don't know another answer. Okay. So, 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 uh, so, so you would conclude that either there's a multiverse or there's some sort of an intelligent creation. Well, I, I, I'm to... not saying I would. I, I maybe well, I was well, semi facetious, I guess, but, but I would say well, it's a mystery and I would be open to that. To, but, but, well, because I wouldn't say. No, you, I, you, could, you, wouldn't, you couldn't say I wouldn't say that unless God. I saw. You could, you, you, you could say some sort of a, an, in, uh, an intelligence uh, something. It could be an extra. No, I don't know if I would say. No, I, I don't know what I would say, but I would say that it's something that, 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 that needs explanation. Well, uh, and, and I would, I would certainly uh, respect the theological argument that that God, maybe God did it. Uh, maybe there's another explanation. I, I mean, the question is, will physics come up with uh, eventually with an explanation for why why the forces do have those those values? And, uh, but those but if if it did, and again, we're we're very hypothetical at this yeah. point. We're saying that the multiverse doesn't exist. I mean, which many most people think is is wrong because the multiverse does exist. But if the multiverse did not exist, you would either have to say that there is something special about a creation of the universe or that it, this is the only way it could possibly be, that there's some absolute yeah, reason it, yeah. that all of these uh, 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 parameters are exactly the way they are, close to that. Yeah, but, then but, but even if you said, yeah, physics it, says, here's the principle, principle yeah. A, B, C, D, yeah, 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 yeah. it tells you why they're that way. Yeah. Then you'd say, well, that principle was created by God yeah. <laughs> so that it would work that way. You know, right, so right. you can always go back to right, that. You know, right, the question right. as a scientist is, what, you know, what does that explain? Is it just a definition? So we're saying, you know, here we have the principle, right. makes the laws, and now we're saying the principle came from God. Right. Okay, but I mean... Yeah, but yeah, but but the, but 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 the hope would be that the principle is something that is uh, it, it's just math that would be the only mathematically coherent way it would be, right? Right, and and so that didn't have to come from God or anything because it couldn't be any other way. Now it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but but it could. It could yeah. yeah. But then the question is, if it could happen, why is it not coincidental that those those uh, uh, laws the only way it had to be in this the in, in this hypothetical model the only way it had to be with all the different uh, parameters are the kinds of things that give rise to life because that's not built into to, to those the, the 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 weight and charge of the electron and all everything else why is why does is life derivative from that so i think you are back I mean, where, where I would conclude is you are back, you, you need the multiverse. Yeah, I'm neat. I mean, okay, I'm perfectly fine with saying that um, if we find there is no multiverse, that there's just a huge coincidence, everything's finely tuned just to give life, and maybe God did it. Who knows? I'd be start looking for more evidence of God. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, uh, you know, but the problem is, is that 
theoretically, we can see the need for a multiverse, but it's difficult to see if there's any, any type of experimental evidence of that. Well, that's an interesting question. So someone might say, well, how could you believe in a multiverse, say, if it's not causally connected and doesn't affect this universe? And th the answer is we do that all the time in physics. There are a lot of things. So I've said many times that uh, theory and science must be falsifiable. It must have predictions. But it doesn't mean that every element of the theory must make predictions. A, a theory, for instance, our, our theory of quantum electrodynamics uh, calls for these things called virtual particles that we can't observe. Uh, that doesn't mean the theory is no good. The theory, despite having elements that we can't observe, does make predictions that we can measure to 10 decimal places and, and it matches. So it's a good theory, even though we can't observe every, every part of the theory, every element of the theory. And sometimes there's an element of the theory we can't observe uh, directly, but we can observe it indirectly. For instance, these virtual particles, we, we can do experiments where we put plates, metal plates together, and, we, and, and they, they cause a force between them. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see the particles, but we see the force, and so we, it, the theory is making predictions so that, 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 that are, are, are borne out, and so we believe in the theory despite these elements that are not observable. So and multiverse the, seems, so if, if the multiverse theory makes other predictions that seem to explain the universe the way they are, and we make observations and they match, then we'll accept that the multiverses are there, and even though they're, they're, not, they're not observable, then the question is what's going on in there is something for philosophers because it's not a physics question, but, but, that they, but they exist as predicted by the theory. But at the end of the day, you're happier with a multiverse than with God. No, I'm happier with whatever uh, uh, gives us predictions that we can uh, verify. That, 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 you know, I, I, it's funny because when I first uh, came to Caltech, uh, I was in the same floor with Feynman, and, and I remember... Uh, he was uh, vociferously against uh, this idea of uh, of wanting uh, nature to appear one way, and at that time it was very, very much uh, people were talking about the uh, theory of everything, the unified uh, field theory that Einstein was looking for, and and he was very much against that uh, that that desire because he just said, well, maybe that maybe nature is this way, maybe there's separate theories. <laughs> Why do you need a theory of everything? And and you know, mathematically speaking, people would go, oh, it's more beautiful. But he was very much rooted in, 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 in what, what is, really is. What and is. I'm not for the, or against the multiverse. I'm just for whatever we find that, that, that seems to be true, and then that will guide me uh, in terms of what I believe.